Everybody, welcome to the second life. I was looking at the screen right now. I'm not used to this. Um, this is my first life, or well, my second life in YouTube or ever anywhere else. So I hope you enjoy. Today we're going to have a lot to talk about. Hope you enjoy this life. Uh, like always, keep my service dog is right back there, having fun with a bone, and uh, he's always my good companion. But today is going to be a day full of information. We're going to be talking about prong colors and e-colors. And there's a lot of opinions, good and bad. Um, we're going to see the good ones and we're going to see the bad part of it. So stay there and stay with me during the whole video. And if you have your own opinion, your own experience, go ahead and put it in the in the comments, I will be able to see it here. If you see in this video after it's being recorded, it's not the live anymore. Don't worry because every time you leave a comment, I try to respond to everybody, but I will do my best to respond to yours. So today's video, if you want to support the channel, uh, there's one way to do it. One of you can go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell. You know what to do. Uh, when it comes to subscribing, that way you get notified every time we post a new video. But if you even if you, even if you don't want to subscribe, you hit the like button if you like the, what you hear today. If you don't like it, hit the don't like button. Anyway, be part, <laughs> being in, take action in the when by doing anything because it helps the channel to grow and help me to make more of these videos. One other way you can support the channel is by supporting my family. How can you support my family? Well, easy. If you look at kids he has a beautiful bandana on and uh, that bandana is um, actually done, created by my wife I don't know what he's looking that for down there maybe oh look at that uh, he got a weight uh, those weights we used to work, work out uh, with here sometimes in my office so he's trying to destroy one so let me take that out of his mouth it's not a toy come on buddy it's not a toy so take that away from him before he turn it into a new toy um, coming back to how you can support the channel, simple. Um, like I said, subscribing is one way. And that bandana that Kip has on belongs to my wife. Well, don't belongs to Kip, but it was made by my wife's company, Life for pa Pause. Life for Pause in uh, Etsy. It's an Etsy store that she has. I will leave the link in the notes. So if you just by clicking the link and go check out what you have, if you don't want to buy anything, you don't have to. But yes, the action of going there and look at what she's offering is going to help her to grow in Etsy. And if you help my family to grow, and then you're helping this channel to grow too, because that way we I can continue to do more videos. Heads up uh, for Valentine's Day's. 
uh, she couldn't have this. She haven't published it yet. I think I helped her, help her today to take the pictures. And um, so she's going to, for next week, she's going to have this uh, really nice uh, basket for Valentine's Day. She have a lot of surprise coming up in the next week or so. Uh, you can actually, don't tell anybody that I told you this, but next week uh, she's going to come out with personalization. So you can put your own, your name, your dog's name on the bandana or if it's a gift, uh, whoever you're giving it to, I think it's going to be a great surpri surprise. So go to the show notes, <clears throat> click that link, go check out her store. If you like something, buy it because that way you support the channel. But let's go back to what we're here for. We're here to talk about prong colors and e-colors. I use both of them, okay? I do like them and some people don't like it. I actually want to say thank you to one of my viewers. Uh, I totally forgot to leave the put the, the photo here of the comment where she was complaining about me using this tools and she had an opinion where she says actually in the in the cover of this video is her comment that she didn't like the idea and uh, she said you better do better than that and I agree if you don't use these tools in the right way so we're going to talk about how is the right way to use the tools and if the tool is for you or not um, let's talk about if it's for you or not before we get into using the tool. Every dog is, has their individual uh, temperament and their individual way of being. So not every tool works for every dog. Like some dogs respond really well with the prong color, some respond really well with the E color. Actually, my sister-in-law is visiting me uh, for the Christmas, and she's staying for a couple more uh, days. And I've been, she came with her a Cocker Spaniel. So I've been training her Cocker Spaniel, and the prong color was the best tool for, for that dog. It's a 35, 30 pounds, 35 pounds dog, small dog. I'm using a smaller size prong color than this one. And I actually use the prong color maybe two or three times to teach him what the prong color was and then correcting here and there and guide him through the exercises that he already know. Um, now that I mentioned correction, you never correct something that the dog doesn't know how to do it. And that's where the problems start when people use prong colors and e colors in a wrong way. So every dog is going to work different. Uh, and you're going to need a different tool. In my case, I'm lucky because I can use both tools uh, with Kip. I can use the prong color or the e color. And how did I use them? Let's start with that. How, how and when I use one and use the other one. So the prong color, I call it the connection to me. Because the prong color, this one is all tangled. Uh, the prong color is attached to the leash. So it's the connection between Kip and me is the prong color. And the E color, I call it the hand of God because this comes from nowhere and he don't have to be attached to me to be able to, um, to, to, to receive information, no correction, information through the E color. So let's go with the E color first. E color has two things. And today I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in depth into the E color. If this is something you like to know more about it, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Because that way I can create a new video talking more about uh, in depth of the e color. There's many videos out there how to use it, but if you want my input, just let me know. But for now, we're gonna talk about how I use it, and, and you know, an in, in overview of the pro, of the e color. I'm using the Mini Educator. They're not paying me for this video. If you see how dirty this is, um, let me see. The light don't show there. Let me see right here. It's really dirty um, because I've been using this for a, almost two years now. I love the product. I bought it with my own money. They don't even know I'm even talking about their product. Uh, I don't think I don't think they need me to talk about the product. They, ha they have a great product and everybody knows about it. So th this product itself has uh, several modes in the way that I use it. One is vibration. Okay, I'm gonna put it next to the microphone. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's vibration. And then I have a, this goes from zero, let me see, from zero to 100. Keep using an eight. That's it, that's all he needs, eight. And if I try it on my hand, uh, you're gonna see the red light when this is going on. Really quick here. I don't even feel it, okay? 
and you can see the light turning red that means i'm using it right there i'm hitting him i'm gonna keep the holder there as long i think 60 seconds it would stop i never use it that long but it, i don't even feel it um so having a a, pro, a a tool like this one a good quality tool like this uh let's give me a second because i don't see my camera right now yeah okay i don't see the camera on over there but it's on over here like i said this is my uh second life and i just want to make sure everything comes out right um let me check here really quick if everything it's actually not there let me check here really quick making sure everything's going good um because i don't see the camera over there it turns off and i can't see if um if you can see me so let's go ahead and check that really quick before i continue here really quick oh there you go before i can okay that's me there okay so you can see me the, my, my camera for some reason has a little screen over there it turns off so apparently you you still can see me okay so keep use this on eight it could go from zero to 100. He used it on A, that will be the black button. And then I have the red button. This one is a booster. You can set it up whatever you want. It can be five more points, 10 more points. In Kips, I have it to 10 more points. You might say, well, if he works really well with A, why I go all the way to 18? Um, when I boost the, the E color, there, I don't feel that either. I barely feel it a little bit there, but the reason why I do that is because if he play, keep his playing with his ball, we at the park, we throwing the ball. He's really excited. It's a lot of things going on with, when he when he's playing, not when he's working, when he's playing. Eight, he won't even know that that anything happened. Actually, the vibration he will notice more than the eight. So I have the booster. If I really need the booster, I will touch the booster, tap the booster, and that will be it. Um, so that's how I use it. I suffer from severe migraines. Uh, actually, yesterday, last night, I started a brand new episode, which I am already made an appointment with a doctor, because normally my migraine, my problem with my neck, uh, I do have a tumor in my neck. Um, it's on my left side. And last night, it started on the right side. And that never happened before. It, it was really tough and, and fast. And today I had it again on the right side. That's all new. So I'm just telling this part of the story to let you know that sometimes I'm in bed because of my migraine and I don't, I want Kip to be with me for some reason. He left the room. I will tap the vibration and for him, that means, hey, come over, wherever, find me wherever I'm at, wherever I am, I'm at, go and come with me. That can happen even at the park. Uh, if I throw the ball or he wants to stay, you know, roaming around in the park back there, we go to a park where there's nobody there um, and I want him to, I want to call him. He's a good distance. I don't want to scream his name. I just tap the vibration for him that communicate him, tell him, hey, I want you to come with me. That is communication. That's why I use the e-color the most is for that far away communication. If I'm training something where we are far away, uh, maybe I want him to down, and again, we are at the park, I want him to down, and I want to go, and he knows that he's doing something wrong, and he's gonna go back to down. In that case, it is a correction, but it's a really low correction for something that he knows, that he, this is, we want you to have this clear, he's already being trained for that, and that he knows and he will go down and stay down. Otherwise, I will have to walk all the way there, say no, correct, and put him down again and come far away. So this, like I said, is the hand of God. It allowed me to reach him and communicate what I want from a distance. Let's go back to training. Everything can be trained with the e collar or the prong collar. But yes, there's a group of people that believe that dogs should be trained only with positive reinforcement. And yes, dogs should be teach everything they don't know how to do with positive reinforcement. When I teach Kip how to sit, positive reinforcement. When I teach him how to down, positive reinforcement. 
but after he knows how to do it, and he decided not to do it, and then I can correct him. And there's one thing in between um, positive reinforcement and correction, and that's escape and avoidance. Escape and avoidance is like leash pressure. Um, this thing is all tangled. Um, let me see if I can all tangle this. Okay, there we go. So escape and avoidance, it means you pull, he's pulling to, to we walking straight. He wants to go in front of me. And this is what I did actually with my sister in law, uh, Cocker Spaniel. That was one of the problems. He, he wants to run, be uh, walking right in front of her because he's 35 pounds. That, that's okay. You know, 35 pounds, you can hold it up and stop the dog. 85 pounds, Jim and Shepard decide he wants to go and you go with him. Especially if you have one of those, uh, I see that a lot with big dogs wearing a vest. I mean, not a vest, a uh, harness. I mean, if an 85 pounds dog wants to go with a harness, I he will go. No matter how strong you are, he will go. So uh, we wanted to fix that problem in her dog and I started using the prong collar. So let's talk about escape and avoidance. I'm pulling right here. Okay, he's pulling forward. He's going forward, pulling. You see this prong, which I'm gonna explain, it's not getting into my skin, it's pinching my skin. They should change the name to pinching color instead of prong color. So he's pinching, he's pinching my skin. This, this is him pulling forward. When he decides he don't wanna pull anymore because this is bothering, he will release. He will go back to my side and I don't do nothing. I haven't done nothing. He released. So escape and avoidance by re really by coping back and being next to me, he will let that pressure go away. And then we're gonna use positive reinforcement. <clears throat> right when the dog is next to you now, good boy. And you can give him a tree, you can pet the dog, whatever you do to reinforce the good behavior. As soon as he get let go, he take that pressure off. Actually, the way I do this, I'm gonna switch cameras really quick. When I switch cameras, uh, my microphone switched too, so the volume might change a little bit. So, um, I mean, let me know if it bothers you. We'll have to change something. Remember, my second life, so I'm testing all this equipment here. So this is Kip's camera. Um, so right here, He's, he's pulling, okay, Doc is pulling. Let me get my, my prong collar. Doc is pulling in front of me, okay? He lets go, immediately come next to, when he comes next to me, I pet or feed the dog, say, good boy. The way I do this is by getting my leash, okay, the camera's right here, I'm sorry. The cam um, I'm getting my leash, and I get, uh, let's say, depending on the dog, uh, for a kid, would be like one foot or two feet away. And I hold my pocket with a leash. Meaning the the length between uh, right here. The, this is remember. Think about this as a leash, not as a prong collar. Um, the length is really right there. If I'm holding my pocket or holding my pants, that length will never change. So if the dog decides to go in front of me, he will encounter the prong collar, and then he will have to come back to the distance that where I'm comfortable with him walking with me that's escape and avoidance. So when he decides to be here on his own, he decides to be here, and then I'm gonna use positive reinforcement. So you see, it is a way to use positive reinforcement, and it's a way to use correction when the dogs know how, what they're doing, and there's a way to use po uh, <clears throat> correction, positive reinforcement, or escape and avoidance. Everything has its own space. I don't believe a dog like Kip 85 pound jam and chamber, strong temperament, okay? Will, uh, hey, thank you right there, sounds, uh, thank you, sounds good, good to hear that. I mean, this is, like I said, this is my second life and um, I'm like fitting around with all this new equipment that I got. Uh, I got a lot of Christmas presents. Actually, I'm using this uh, little thing here that my, I can't show it right now, but that my sister-in-law gave me and I can press buttons and switch things. So when I switch uh, to Kip's camera, it switched to this microphone right here and the sound might go crazy. So there's a space to use uh, a positive reinforcement. There's a space to use correction. There's a space to, to use uh, escape and avoidance. If you have a small dog, they respond really well only to positive reinforcement, go for it. 
go for it. It's a good idea. And I, I applaud that. But for a big dog with the temperament that the German Shepherd has, for a working dog, dog is going to be with me in public. Dog that have to be controlled 100% of the time. I can't rely only on positive reinforcement. And this only not work with dogs. It works even with children. If you children only, you do, oh my God, you did so good, you're good. Oh my God, you did so good. And you stay only with positive reinforcement. There's no value in things. And they don't know what a correction is. And that they will learn that in the, in the bad way when they grow up. And that's something we, I'm getting uh, getting <laughs> away from the subject, but it's something that I really uh, I'm really passionate about it. Like for example, and I was talking about this with my sister-in-law today. Uh, kids go to baseball games these days. I remember Samuel, my small, my my younger child. He's 17, almost 18 now. Um, used to play t-ball. And if he loses, he gets a trophy. If he wins, he gets a trophy. Positive reinforcement. When are you going to teach him that if you don't do 100%, you don't get a trophy? When? When you, be, when you graduate from college or high school and you live in the real life that if you don't work, you don't make money? That if you do something wrong driving, you get a ticket? That if you do something against the law, you get arrested? There's when you're going to learn it. And the same is for your dog. You don't want your dog to learn that that's not supposed to be done when things get out of hand. And that's why I'm always going to be really passionate about having a dog that knows what a correction is, that when they when the dog receives a correction, it will change his behavior to do what you're telling him to do or what he's supposed to do. In the comment that I receive, it says that a uh, kid doesn't get excited because of the tool when, because every time I put this on, he gets excited. He, he, she was saying that he doesn't get excited because of the tool. because He get excited because of what's coming. And you are 100% right. Uh, he's not, he don't even know what the tool means. He knows when the tool is on him, he's going to play. He's going to train. He's going to be with me. He's going to be working. He's going to be having fun. So it's not a bad thing. He, he knows this doesn't mean a bad thing. It means that he has to do what he has to do, but he's going to have fun anyway because it's a difference between correction and treating an animal the wrong way. And that's where this tool has the bad fame is that people think, oh, you get a e color and you correct every problem with your dog. You just have to hit that button and hit it until the dog stops doing what he's doing. No, that's, that's not how it works. Uh, I can, you can tell a kid, child, to um, throw the trash in the trash can if you haven't teach him where the trash can is at or and how to take that trash and put him in there. If you haven't teach the behavior, you can correct it. And if you put this on the child and you start hitting the child, he don't know what you're trying to say. If, and, and, and that's a child that you can talk to, right? Um, and you hitting this doesn't mean that he should not know the trash goes in the trash can. No, it hurts or it bothers me. In this case, it don't really hurt. It just bothers. It's, it's, it's a little, uh, a little like pinch you feel. Uh, if you ha don't have one and you have a friend, just try it on yourself. Um, uh, that's why I, I love this brand. I try other ones cheaper that you can get in stores, local stores, and they're like $60. And uh, when you press it. Oh my God, it's really hard. I mean, it goes from one to five, from one to six. Imagine that. I mean, it's from one to three. There have to be like a lot of power there. So it, it, you can feel it. And, and I will never use one of those brands. This one goes from zero to 108. And I can control eight, nine, ten, 10. And um, so that makes it a good tool. So he knows, <clears throat> your dog needs to know first that what this means what are you expecting from him when when you use this and what the vibration means and what each thing means and what's expected to do at that moment. And when that's established with positive reinforcement, and then you can use this type of communication. And then from there, if it's necessary, 
you can use this communication to let him know that what he's doing is wrong, and that's called correction. So those are the three ways that basically you can use the prompt color, the e color. Again, for me, and I don't want to go too deep or too long in this video. Um, if we can talk about it individually, how I train with it, um, I want my dog to know this is me directly. Again, if I need to tap on it or if he's trying to move away from me, in my case, Keep doesn't do that anymore. Like he wears it, he's, he don't need this, but he, he wears it all the time that we are out and he would never leave my side. But if by any chance a, something happened, I don't know why, because it hasn't happened yet. Um, and he decided that he wants to do something different and then I have this tool to stop him to it. So I'm gonna show you really quick how excited he gets when he, um, actually see this tool and and when I put it on it and I'm actually you know what let's work with the dog without this and I'm back here back here back here, back over here. I'm, I'm back, I'm back. Uh, let's work with the dog a minute without this without any of the tool then I'm gonna put the tool on and we're gonna work with it and let's see if we see any difference in the behavior of Kip um, and I don't think nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be perfect, but I think it's something that is good to show you that it's not different. If you do it the right way, there's not, not different between one thing and the other. And then I'm gonna, we're going to talk a little Actually, we already covered a little bit about the wrong way to do it. It's if the dog doesn't know and you start using these tools, that's the wrong way. Um, this is more like a leash pressure. It, with the same thing that you do with a regular color where you pull. Uh, you can do leash pressure with the E color where you actually, I'm gonna go really quick on this because this is not a training video, but if you um, right here hold this button and you pull it and whenever he give, you let go, just exactly like a leash pressure and let go. Let's say he's here, this is the leash, you pull it, you pull it, you pull it, he, he let go, you let go. Same thing, he's right here, you pull it, you pull it, you pull it, he gives, you let go. You see, that's leash pressure. This can be used as a leash pressure uh, tool, just like anything else. And you can build from there. This is not a training video, but I wanted to show you that's how actually uh, one of the things that you can do that we haven't talked about it. The same thing happened with this, escaping avoidance. You, you know, you're pulling and he gives and the pressure goes away. So now let's go and work a little bit with Kip. Uh, Kip, let's go. Um, right now, Kip had no tools on him. Over here, let me see, come over here. Up here. What are you doing? Okay, up here. Up here. There you go. So now we work in here, and you see he's on, next to me. Up here. Uh, back. Okay, there's no tools. I mean, they're on my table right there. I move forward, move back. Okay, I move this way. Move back, back. Good. Couché. So responding perfectly. I see. Good boy. Sue. Nice. Good boy. That a good boy. Okay, that's positive reinforcement. Good boy. Um, I don't know how to do go back. I, I, don't, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I wish I could. But good boy. He knows that. He knows I'm, that's a good thing right there. Let's go. Come on. Okay, it's back. Nice, good boy. So this that voice for him means, you know, I'm doing good. This is positive reinforcement right there. Uh, free, free. Good boy. So now we, get, uh, right here, let's come back to me. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the tools on him. I'm going to put the e-color on him. And let's see his reaction when he sees the e-color. I was looking at the screen again. This whole thing is being confusing for me. I'm learning everything. Okay, so here we go. And let me show him the tool. Ooh, soup. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Okay. Again, he's a remote, so I'm holding by the antenna. Actually, I'm going to put it on my table. Let's go. Ah, uh, come. It's on my table, so I'm not using it. Soup. And why I'm doing this, leaving it on the table, is because sometimes is the dog has received a... Um, how would I say, I don't know how to say this in English, but if the dog is, no, something bad is gonna happen because he has the e collar on, and then um, he, just by putting it on, he would like be scared and start behaving different. So let's see what he's doing now. 
Okay. You see, nothing's happening. He's, he's moving with my body, not even commands. Um, right here. Okay. Out. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Good boy. And we're going to the side. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, that's with that tool. Let's switch to. Let's add another one. Let's add mo two more tools. Another one. Soup. Same thing. Uh, this position is not for everybody. For me, it's perfect. I love it because it's more comfortable uh, here having him there for two reasons. Actually, my first life, I talk about this because I don't people I don't like people petting him. Um, so I would have him there. But you see, to put the collars on and everything, it's uh, a lot more comfortable. Uh, prone collar should be all the way up there. We can talk in another video if you want to learn how to use the prone collar. Free. Keep coming. Sue. Good boy. Back. Let's go. Good boy. Ah, where are you? Come on. Sue. Good. No, no. Sue. Sue. Good. Good boy. Couché. Good boy. I see. Good. Oh, Pierre. Good boy. Free. Okay. So, and I'm not going to take the whole training day right there. But the idea is that, I mean, he don't see any different between, at least I don't see any different between training with the tools or training without the tools at this point, at this stage of uh, his career as a service dog. He knows what he's doing. I'm, I don't have to use the tools as a something bad. It's just another tool. And like everything, knives in my kitchen. I had this really nice knife set. Um, because I like cooking, they're big and really, really sharp. I can actually slice tomatoes, like really thin, it's with no effort, and they're tools. If you use one of those tools in the wrong way, it can do harm. It can actually harm myself, cutting my fingers off, um, and then you can cause harm. It can become a weapon because it's used in the wrong way, that tool. A car can become a weapon, and it, but it's a great tool to go to work. So every tool, if you use it the wrong way, or most of the tools, if you use it, use it the wrong way, they can become harmful. Um, okay. Hey, whenever you want, actually, um, uh, I'm creating a <laughs> another YouTube channel where I talk a little bit about creating your own business online. And part of it is going to be how to set up like this. Uh, to be honest, I'm a photographer for like 25 years, and but there's little things here and there that are new for me. And I like technology, but I'm still learning a couple of the things. It's not only learning, I think it's more getting used to it, getting too used to the paying attention to the camera, to what I have to say, and what I have to press. And that will be a subject for another day. But thank you, and if you need any help, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and I can actually send you my email and uh, anything that I can share with you. I'll be glad to do it, actually. That's what we're here for, right? To help each other. So finishing and closing today, Again, every tool can be used because I don't want these videos to go longer than 30 minutes. And we are seven, I mean, like seven minutes away from there. Actually, no, we're past by two minutes already. So let's close it here. Um, so every tool can be used the wrong way. These tools, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, let me know in the comments. I can create new videos with a spe answering specific questions or we can do a whole life uh, on the e color, how I use it. I can uh, do a video outside and show you step by step uh, things that I do. I won't be pressing the buttons um, when I teach how to do it because if he has not do nothing wrong, I can't be pressing these buttons. Uh, right now, he's just sliding down back there. I could press the vibration and he will come to me, but it don't make any sense because he's right there. Um, and even him will might get confused because he will be like, I'm in front of you. Why are you calling me? Um, if he's far away from me, definitely I would do it. It will, it will come. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, let me know. And I will definitely share that info, uh, some information create these videos for you, uh, teaching how to use, how to train with these tools. 
I hope you like this video. Uh, actually, I might miss something if I did. You can ask questions in the comments again. And don't forget to subscribe um, and ring that bell, click the like button, comment, do everything. In the show notes, it's going to be the link address to my wife's uh, Etsy store where you can get beautiful bandanas and a bunch of stuff. Don't forget to do that. Do that. To, that will, It's one way to support the channel. And I will see you in the next time. I hope I'm getting better at doing this. I'm getting used to... Um, I'm getting used to a couple of things. First is feel comfortable in front of the camera, right? And at the same time, doing all these things around me and working with Kip and switching cameras and, and making sure the microphones are working all at the same time. Uh, I think that's the most, the biggest part, getting all that together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, love you guys and I'll see you the next time. So I hope you have a great rest of the week and I will see you in two weeks. Oh, one more thing before you guys go, uh, two things. First, I'm doing every other Monday at six and I don't have a name for the show. So I need a name for the show. So I need you to put it in the comments and I need to make sure Mondays at six every other week is good for you. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Peggy's my wife right there. Make sure you check her store. Um, and I love you guys. See you the next time and take care. I'll see you in two weeks. Take care.